This here is not another viewer's broken gaming PC. It's my own. My own rig has made it into fix or flop. Yeah, allow me to get you up to speed. So uh, I've been sitting in this corner of my office. Usually we film back there because uh, I didn't expect to have this camera rolling for this uh, segment. I, I thought I would just be kind of troubleshooting on the side. In fact, I have been for the past hour and a half. Only just now did I decide to pick the camera up and film because I figured this thing has completely stumped me. Why not bring you guys along for the ride? I don't normally like to use personal rigs or rigs of family members or friends for fix or flop because it doesn't feel as authentic to me. I like just jumping in blind with you all and trying to solve the puzzle, so to speak, knowing that I don't know any more than you do, I think is a real gem of fix or flop. But I, I'm, I'm so completely stumped. I don't know where to turn. I don't know what to do other than just to start replacing pretty big chunks of hardware because I'm just, I just don't know what's going on. So what I'm working with in this rig is an Intel Core i9-14900. This is a retail sample I bought myself. This isn't sent from Intel. I actually bought this to, to kind of test um, some of the uh, voltage issues uh, on a non-K SKU to see if they were uh, prevalent or not. Uh, so far I haven't had any issues and I've used this chip for about six months, but I don't expect th that this chip is actually to blame. The motherboard is a Z690 Gigabyte Aorus Elite AX. Uh, we've used that in several videos. It has worked up to now as well. Uh, I also have tried a 12th gen Intel Core i5 12400F. Uh, that has not worked in this particular combo of hardware either and I'm wondering where to turn next. Essentially, the rig turns on, but it doesn't post. I've tried BIOS updates, I've tried QFlash Plus, I have tried manually booting into the BIOS with a 12th gen native working chip, and I still cannot get the system to post. In fact, the 12400F doesn't even get hot, neither does the 14900, mind you. So I'm completely at a loss for why this system just doesn't want to play ball. So here we go. Yes, it is a disaster, also, uh yeah, I was doing some painting, ignore that. Uh, we have the system here, which I know is, is sitting in a very glorious spot right now. It doesn't look very enticing, but it is, I assure you, all wired up correctly. I was concerned that maybe I wasn't uh, getting power to the CPU, so I checked connections on the power supply side. I do have extensions connected, but I've bypassed those. Uh, they're reconnected now, re -zip tied and everything, but um, I bypassed those to make sure those weren't the issue. So all of the primary connections are made, are sound. Now I've got a chip in there and there's no cooler. Don't worry, it doesn't get hot. I'm feeling it as we speak. Yep, not getting hot. And there is a debug LED down there for CPU, which is interesting. I've also got a, uh, a screen over here hooked up just in case, but we never get a post. I really do not understand. Like the 12400F, even a native 12th gen chip compatible with the Z690 motherboard doesn't want to work. Also, in case you're wondering, the underside of each of these chips is clean. This here is my 14900. Yes, it's a bit dirty, but on the back side, all of these pads are sparkly. But even in the 14 gen's case, it is ice cold after 60 seconds of being powered on. That should not be the case. It should be much, much hotter than that by now, which tells me that it's probably not getting power. But but why? Like the, This power supply is great. I've been using this thing for years. There's no way this is the issue. I'll be honest, this entire time I was thinking we were dealing with a BIOS issue because I had a 14th gen chip in a Z690 motherboard, probably gonna run into a BIOS problem. Even a 12th gen chip will not work with the motherboard and that 12th gen chip again, is not getting hot. So like that, that's, <laughs> that's really bad. It's, it's not even warming up. If it was warming up, that's one thing, but it's not even getting power fed from the board. So what the heck is going on? Now that you're caught up to speed, I hope you will stay with me. If you're planning your next PC build, then consider checking out our sponsor, VIP SCD Key. Their Windows 10 and 11 OEM keys sell for a fraction of retail and will unlock the full potential of your OS. they will also remove those pesky activation watermarks. Click the links below to get started today and be sure to use our special offer code SKGS for a sweet discount on a variety of options, including Windows 10 and 11, Pro and Home, and more. You know, I was gonna move things to the desk and try to formalize this episode, but we're just gonna keep it rough because we started it rough. <laughs> I'm not I'm not really in the mood to beautify things right now. So I'm going to bring you along uh, and uh, show you how I'd be doing things if the camera wasn't here. Of course, talking to you along the way. So that's the one part that's not going to be uh, totally candid. But uh, the setting definitely is. It's not pretty. 
and I'm okay with that because usually you guys aren't seeing it. This is a little interesting. So the wire view here is showing that we're only getting 18 watts pulled to the graphics curve, which I imagine is because the system hasn't fully posted yet. This is more or less like an idle sort of like startup power phase. So I don't think we're dealing with a graphics card issue, but what I like to do in situations like this where I don't really have a clue as to what could be wrong is remove non-vital stuff. The graphics card doesn't need to be here. SSD, uh, though you have a capture card in there, I don't think that's the problem either, but we're gonna remove all of that and strip things down to just bare platform to see if the same symptom exists. While I'm doing this, I'm sure some of you are wondering, Greg, why on earth are you working with electronics on carpet? Isn't that poor etiquette? Well, my friends, this is Florida where it is almost always humid. Yes, even in the winter, even if I was worried about ESD, I couldn't possibly build up enough of it here to cause any issues. This 3.0 right there. Oh, shit. it arced like all the way back here. It still works. Well, I'll be damned. It is very, very unlikely that any of those components actually end up crapping themselves. Like it's just a precaution that a lot of folks like to take. That's fine. If you want to take that precaution, be my guest. You can wear an ESD strap. I've never worn one in my life and I've never damaged anything with ESD. Even if I was in a drier environment, I wouldn't be concerned. But if you are, maybe don't work on carpet, maybe wear a bracelet. I'm not gonna tell you what you should or shouldn't do. I'm just telling you from my experience, it's a non-issue. Just to show you, I've got HD audio disconnected. I have front panel disconnected. I've left some fans in, but I don't expect those are gonna be the problem. I've got the type C and three cables disconnected. Only the 24 pin, the eight pin EPS up top, and the CPU along with the single stick of DDR5 are connected to this board. That's it. I've even got HDMI connected to the motherboard now. Let's see if we can run off of integrated graphics. If we do get a post, which I doubt, but this uh, is for all the marbles. Also, I have to manually jump. Let's see if I can manually jump while holding the camera. Alrighty, there we go. So yeah, things still light up the fan spin. These are reverse blade fans, by the way, so they're not exhausting air. They're actually pulling in air. I really like it uh, this way. So you can see the blades without the ugly, uh, well, frames you know, showing on the inside. So, yep, yeah. uh, we're not, yeah, we're not heating up at all. So don't expect we're gonna get a post. Man, I, okay, so the, the odds of two CPUs being dead, very, very low, especially considering I've tested both of these very recently. In fact, this chip was working like yesterday in a different motherboard. So I'm inclined to say the motherboard is bad, but like, why? Because again, we tested the board as well. In this video you're seeing here, we got to post. Now, we did have a BIOS issue, but once we rectified the BIOS issue, the system worked no problem. So why now? It, it just doesn't make sense. I feel like something else is going on here. Let's see here. Quick sanity check with our inline PSU tester. Everything here looks good. Yeah, <laughs> not really surprised, but just uh, figured I'd give it one go before we swap motherboards. I feel like that's the only other option at this point. Our worst fears are coming true. I always dread motherboard swaps. It's just so much more work involved. You have to disconnect basically everything. It's like rebuilding a system from scratch. Ooh, this is a tight fit. And yeah, I should probably disconnect that HDMI cable now. There we go. Yeah, it just doesn't make a lot of sense. Again, this board was working just fine before. Like, why would it kick the can now? And no, I didn't brick it with a BIOS update. Like I didn't do anything wrong there. In fact, when I realized that my 14th gen chip might not work with the board natively, I actually installed the 12400F, which is why I already had it out, uh, to update the BIOS that way. So I just put a 12th gen chip in there and just to update the normal, because I had issues with QFlash Plus before, and that still didn't post. Only after that did I resort to trying to flash with QFlash Plus, and we didn't get anywhere there either. So I don't think we have like a bricked board from a BIOS perspective, as some of you are probably thinking that. Uh, I, I just, I, I really have no explanation for it. We can check the case one, one time real quickly, just to make sure there's nothing in there that might have shorted the board. Yeah, okay, now, so it looks like all the standoffs are in their correct places. Uh, yeah, that, that uh, okay, just like a last minute thought. Could have been the issue. I've seen that once or twice in the playlist. Not the problem here. This is also a shot in the dark considering the age of the board. Let's check CMOS battery voltage. Yep, just over three, that is healthy. Also just checking to make sure I've got this back plate oriented correctly because if it's flip flop the other way, you could short potentially some of these SMDs behind the socket, which would be, uh, very bad thing to do. I wonder if I can get this on camera. Don't mind the thermal paste residue in the socket. This uh, board was used in a video where we intentionally sabotage the socket with thermal paste. I've discussed this in 
a couple of videos already. So if you want to get caught up to speed, check out those linked in the description. That should not affect anything here. The board worked perfectly fine before and after those tests. But I want to show you that one pin there that looks to be very much out of place. There's a couple that are slightly out of place, but that one there, it, it looks decent. All right, I, I quickly wrote it off. I didn't think it was an issue. But when I looked at a steep angle, see from there, it looks fine too. It's only certain angles. Do I notice that pin not wanting to uh, sit where we tell it? And I'm gonna try to fix, I don't think that's the issue. So it looks like that pin's gonna still make contact where it's supposed to but I'm gonna give it one final shot here to try to fix this. So again, to reiterate, the thermal paste residue should not be the issue. It's not electrically conductive. And again, we tested the board afterwards. Looking just like this, it posted no problem. What may have happened though, is we had some tolerance issue with some of the pins we had to fix after cleaning said socket. And it's possible that these might be touching each other in a couple places, or maybe they're just not perfectly lined up. Uh, and it might've gotten worse with time, maybe thermal expansion, some of these once the socket got hot, that is also a possibility. So I'm gonna get these as close to stock as I can without breaking them, because if one of these breaks, the board is toast. Any more bending than this and I risk breaking some of them, so this is as far as we're gonna go. If this doesn't work as is, we're just gonna write the board off and move on to another. Come on, I really want this thing to work. It would be so nice to use this board. So I've used it a lot already and it served me quite well. I don't think it's wanting to comply anymore. I wasn't building this rig on carpet when I first assembled this, what you're seeing here. I only started working on the carpet once I realized it wasn't working. It just doesn't want to work anymore. I, I, I have no other explanation other than the board just died. We can give it a visual inspection, but things look okay. I've even checked under the VR MOSFET area. I don't see anything burned, blown, broken off, and I'm really bothered by it because I don't have any other explanation apart from that. Here we go then, Gigabyte Z790 Eagle AX. This is already natively compatible with 14 gen processors, like revision two or three or something like that. So we can go ahead and throw our 14900 directly into this board and try for a post. This one's, this one's brand new, so. <laughs> It should work. And yeah, it's not as fancy as our other one, but if it works, I'm not gonna complain. I am not going to reassemble everything just yet. Obviously we want to play it safe and ensure that replacing the board fixes the issue. I have high hopes for this. I've got the board in, a single stick of DDR5, 24 pin, and the eight pin EPS. So that is all along with a 14900, because again, that's natively supported. Here we go, three, two, one. Alrighty. So the rig is on, and oh yes, the chip is getting hot. Oh, it's so good. It's so good when the chip gets hot. That's that's a great sign. It's also, yeah, it's getting hot pretty quick. This is the Core i9 we're talking about. So I'm gonna go ahead and power off. And I did see the debugs starting to cycle to VGA, so it was probably about to post. Uh, but I am confident enough now to go ahead and throw the CPU cooler back on, the graphics card in, we'll get the whole rig set up and uh, give it one final hoorah. Any second now, we should get something on our screen. Come on, hey, there we are, <laughs> all right. It just powered off and is powering back on now. Okay, we're gonna, just roll with the punches. This is uh, th this has been a really weird one, and I apologize that it's so informal, but I've just been so bothered by something that, again, I cannot explain. Just a board that has decided to give up the ghost all of a sudden doesn't want to play ball with any of my CPUs. Boy, oh boy, is my desktop messy. We've got to clean this up, but uh, we are in Windows. That's awesome. Drivers have updated. <sighs> this. This is the wild one. You know what though? I just can't let it go. So I've stripped this board down about as far as it can go. And I've powered it on, Core i5 in here, known working stick DDR5, known working power supply. The rig is on, or at least it should be. We have the lit CPU debug LED, but 
That is it. And the CPU, after about five minutes of it being like this, is still lukewarm. Now I confirmed with our FLIR imaging camera here that we don't have any heat running to the CPU socket. In fact, nowhere around power delivery is getting hot, which is interesting. I thought maybe we'd see a few hot MOSFETs, VRM, somewhere around here. We'd see some heat, but nothing. It is stone cold. The only areas of heat on this board are coming from the chipset, which is down here. An area near the sound chip, I'm not sure if this is related to sound or not. It is an odd part of the board to be hot, I will admit, considering nothing's connected to these PCI slots at that. And then there are a couple other smaller chips that are a little warm, but not super hot. I do find it interesting that the chipset is warming up despite the CP remaining stone cold. So like it's trying to work, trying to initialize things, but isn't able to for obvious reasons. The uppermost PCIe slot is also pretty chill. No, it's not warm at all here, but lower down, the two lower PCIe slots are pretty warm to the touch by this point. And I, I don't think that that's normal. That, that's this is just not a normal location for the board to warm up considering what's around here. In fact, the sound chip itself, both of these are, they're, they're, they're chill, they're, they're not hot at all. So what exactly around here is, is warming up? I think these are tiny resistors or capacitors down here. They are hot to the touch. I have no idea why, that is super strange. Also check this out, it even throws a CPU debug LED with no RAM installed at all. So something is so catastrophically wrong on the CPU side that it doesn't even have time to check to see if DDR4 or DDR5 in this case is even installed. Sometimes if my back's up against a wall, I do this just as a sanity check. Like, okay, is it really the CPU or is this board just confused as to what's going on? It doesn't even care that I haven't installed this. <laughs> so uh, we, we are cooked folks definitely cooked. Unfortunately, this is as far as I can go. I don't have the tools nor frankly the know-how to traverse any further. And even if I did, I'm not sure it'd be worth it because this board's maybe 200, 250 bucks tops. That's brand new, used maybe a little under $200. And I've already spent a ton of time trying to figure out what's even wrong with this. I know that folks that do this for a living could probably uh, hone in on the issue much sooner, but I, I'm just completely stumped. It's more feasible in my case to just replace the board outright, which is what we've done. Gotta say goodbye to this thing. <sighs> well, again, I am disappointed that I can't tell you more about the motherboard, but I am not disappointed that we got my rig back up and running again. <laughs> I'm back on the grid. This is, uh, this is great. I, I, I hate it when my own personal rig is down. I can't edit, I can't game, I can't do really anything. I have the Apple, the Mac Studio over on the other side of the office, and I've got Lisa's machine behind me, but all of the files that I want to readily access are on this machine. Of course, they're backed up as well, but this uh, gives me instant access, so to speak, and so anytime I have issues with it, it just, it just drives me insane. So much so to the point where I don't even feel like most of the time making videos about it, because again, I just want to get it back up and running as quickly as possible. This one really stumped me though, and uh, I, I honestly cannot believe that that board died during the transfer. I, I just, I, I don't know what I did, but I'm so happy that the rig's back up and running. I just, I need to sync like the RGB and stuff. I need to fix a lot of stuff on here actually, some Windows updates that I'm going to uh, gracefully ignore. And uh, yeah, get to editing. Gotta get this video and others up on the channel for you all. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this one, give it a thumbs up. That would be greatly appreciated. Also, if you know somebody who has a broken PC and you'd like a chance to have it fixed for free in this playlist, be sure to uh, submit a form. It's gonna be linked in the description. As long as you are a Central Florida local, you have to meet in person to drop the system off and pick it back up again. That's really my only requirement. We film these videos and monetize them on sites like YouTube so we don't charge for labor. We don't even charge for replacement hardware if it comes to that. And uh, at the very least, maybe you learn a thing or two in the process, right? So uh, that's been the goal of this playlist since the beginning. Again, that support is huge. Thank you so much for that. Consider subscribing if you haven't already. Check out those links in the description and uh, maybe sticking around for the next one. My name is Greg. Thanks for learning with me.